What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of China Update where I try and help you guys keep on top of the macro developments coming out of the world's number two economy. My name is Tony, for those who are watching for the first time, I work in China in an executive role and a big part of my job requires that I follow those macro developments. So if that is something you're interested in and if you want to be just as informed as my clients, maybe consider subscribing. Everyone else, it's good to see you guys, end of the week. Uh, this week, China saw the end of its Liaohui or two sessions, which is made up of the National People's Congress, which finished this week and before that was the the CPPCC, or the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, it's a bit of a mouthful. Basically, these are annual events where we see a lot of major policy coming out of the central government, and then over the next few months, we see a lot of that policy implemented into law. And so I wanted to actually take this opportunity to discuss some of the announcements, the policy announcements that came out of this year's two sessions and just go through each field by field. This is going to be a shorter episode than usual because we won't be looking at as much international uh, developments in regards to China. It's going to be a lot of domestic stuff. As always guys, if you enjoy the episode, make sure you smash the like button. It's a huge help, especially since this is uh, technically quite sensitive uh, sort of content and so YouTube uh, does not uh, uh, recommend it as much and also I want to take this opportunity to thank my patron supporters you guys are awesome thank you so much for supporting a small YouTube channel with that said let's jump into this week's China update okay well let's start up with the economy and typically when we have uh, five-year plans the party in the past has made fixed uh, GDP targets in advance now with regard to a fixed GDP target this year China did not include any average annual growth targets this year unlike previous the previous five-year plan that we saw in 2016. So this next five-year plan is from 2021 through to 2025. It did, however, pledge to keep growth at a quote-unquote reasonable range over the next five years. And we discussed uh, last week that Li Keqiang, the premier, set uh, an annual GDP target this year of quote, above 6%, end quote. And if you look at last week's episode, we sort of dived in what exactly this means for China and for its economic uh, growth and frankly for uh, the reforms that need to happen and the rebalancing which are tied directly to this political setting uh, or setting political growth targets. There uh, have been several state media articles that I've seen this week arguing that 6% growth is not very low, which suggests that media officials are concerned that some may view this rate as quite low. At a briefing on Monday, um, Hu Zutai, uh, Deputy Head of the National Development and Reform Commission, China's, uh, China's top economic planning body, said that China had not abandoned uh, GDP growth targets. He explained that by omitting a numerical target, quote, Beijing will have more flexibility to deal with new uncertainties and developments and will be able to set goals based on each year's specific situation and conditions, end quote. On this point, and I think this is a little bit interesting, many institutes, including Bank of America on Monday, are predicting U.S. growth this year to be 6 to 8 percent. Now, this is uh, in large part due to the lower a base from last year, but it's still interesting to think that this year it is highly likely that the United States rate or speed of GDP growth could be faster than the PRC. The first time this has happened for decades, I think it's the first time since 1976, I believe, the first time since 1976 that the US economy has grown faster than the PRC, which is quite amazing actually. And while we're still on the economy, the finance ministry released its 2021 budget report saying that the government is targeting a fiscal deficit for the year of, quote, around 3.2% end quote of GDP, with a deficit projection of about 3.57 trillion RMB, approximately half a trillion US dollars. Remember, though, that a lot of government debt, uh, in fact, probably the majority of public debt is off the books typically in local financing vehicles. Now, on the military, China increased its 2021 defense budget by 6.8% to over 1.3 trillion yuan, about 209 billion US dollars when converted to US dollars, according to a draft budget report issued uh, by the National People's Congress. As such, official spending on the military as a share of overall national government spending will rise from 5.1% in 2020 to 5.4% in 2021, the highest in several years, representing about 2.1% of uh, PRC 
GDP. Now, the unofficial rate may be higher still. For comparison, uh, for comparison's sake, military spending in the US represents approximately 15% of government spending and approximately 3.4% of GDP. General Xu Qiliang, Vice Chairman of the Central Military Com uh, Commission and thus second in command of the arms, Armed Forces, the PLA, after General Secretary Xi Jinping himself expressed, quote, in the face of the Thucydides trap and border problems, the military must speed up increasing its capacity. This is the first time that a senior leader in the PRC has acknowledged the possibility of the Thucydides trap vis-a-vis -vis China and the United States, and thus a need to prepare for war with the United States. COVID-19 vaccinations here are, uh, are far behind the sort of rates that we're seeing of vaccinations in the United States and other places, partly because the situation here is more stable, but also for other reasons to do with capacity and production capacity issues. But the National uh, Development and Reform Commission expressed in a report that China will maintain its strict border controls throughout this year and that it does not uh, predict that China will reach herd immunity until at least mid-2022, so at least another year to a year and a half before they foresee reaching potentially herd immunity in the PRC and loosening the borders. On technology, the five-year plan lists seven strategic areas considered essential to, quote, national security and overall development, end quote. These include AI, quantum computing, integrated circuits, genetic and biotechnology research, neuroscience and aerospace fields. The PRC plans to create national laboratories and bolster academic programs to incubate and buttress some of these technologies. The government has also announced the deployment of massive amounts of capital in an effort to, quote, catch up with and surpass the United States, end quote, in advanced technology. As of the first quarter of 2020, officials had set up 1,741 guidance funds with a registered target size of 11 trillion RMB, or approximately 1.55 trillion US dollars. Perhaps the most uh, controversial development, uh, internationally at least, during the Lianghui, or two sessions, and the, the, one of the developments most followed by the West, uh, were the changes to the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region electoral process. We may remember that the national security law that was passed uh, during the Lianghui by the National People's Congress last year was implemented within a few weeks. So what are the changes with this, um, with this process change? Well, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall establish an election committee. The committee uh, shall be responsible for the election of the chief executive and members of LegCo. The election committee shall comprise 1,500 members. The chief executive shall be elected by the uh, election committee and appointed by the Central People's Government, that is Beijing. A candidate qualification review committee of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region shall also be established. The committee shall be responsible for reviewing and confirming the qualifications of candidates for the election committee members, uh, the chief executive and leg co-members. One of the qualifications to be reviewed will be sufficient, quote-unquote, patriotism. With these changes and the new seats, which will be decided by appointment, even if pan-democratic candidates were able to win all directly elected uh, seats, uh, they still would not enjoy a majority and thus would be politically impotent. The plan was approved by the National People's Congress with 2,895 members voting for and zero members voting against. It will now go to the National People's Congress uh, Standing Committee for drafting, review and passage into law. China's top legislative body will accelerate legislation related to external affairs, upgrading the legal toolkit for, quote, guarding against risks in order to oppose foreign sanctions, interference, and long-arm jurisdiction, end quote. The company law and enterprise bankruptcy law will both be reformed this year as well by the National People's Congress uh, Standing Committee to, quote, develop a modern uh, economic system, anti-monopoly laws, and the law on scientific and technological progress, end quote. And on quote-unquote ethnic unity, General Secretary Xi Jinping called on Inner Mongolia to act as a fine example to the rest of the nation in showcasing ethnic unity, expressing quotes, as the first ethnic minority autonomous region in China, Inner Mongolia shall make solid efforts in promoting ethnic unity, 
end quote. China has been undergoing a massive anti-organized crime campaign for a few years now. Uh, this has been tied to the anti-corruption campaign as many local gangs in poorer regions, particularly in parts of the north, are uh, uh, tied to corrupt local government. During the two sessions, uh, China bo uh, boasted that its judicial system wound up over 33,000 quote-unquote anti-mafia cases invo uh, involving over 220,000 people since the start of the campaign, which was in 2018. The courts closed more than 99% of the cases involving these criminal gangs and issued, quote, severe criminal punishments, end quote, uh, to 34.5% of uh, perpetrators, according to the report released during the National People's Congress this week. This represented more cases in the last two years than the previous 10 years. Of course, to get a more robust idea of what is actually happening here and what these numbers actually mean, we would need to look at, uh, we'd need to look past these headlines at the numbers and analyze things at the granular level. Now, China-US, this actually isn't related to the two sessions, but I wanted to put these two uh, small updates in here for our purposes because they will flow on into next week, and I also think this is an important development. So the first is, according to the American Chamber of Commerce's annual business climate survey, over half of US companies in China surveyed are pessimistic about the effect the bilateral relations could have on their China business over the next two years, with only 16% of respondents uh, respondents expressing optimism. This is probably one of the lowest in, in many years. And second, um, more important for our purposes here, the US government has confirmed that Yang Jiechi and Wang Yi, China's two top diplomats, will be flying to Alaska to meet with US Secretary uh, Blinken and National Security Advisor Sullivan on the 18th of March, so next week. This will be the first face-to-face -face meeting during, uh, of, of top officials during the Biden administration. Last up on the future, I think this quote gives us a sense uh, of, of the what I would argue is misplaced triumphalism among some top PRC leadership and how it paints their view of the future in the following years. Quote, Chinese of all ethnic groups experience the extraordinary accomplishments achieved by our party, the country and the public last year. This was especially seen in the striking contrast of the order in the East and the chaos in the West, the rise of the East and the decline of the West, and the ascendancy of China and the fall of the US. End quote. Okay, guys, that was a little bit different this week, uh, looking at the uh, the two sessions and the developments that, that, that came out of, of those over the last week or so. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back to a regular episode next week. There is a small chance that I won't be able to release something. I may have to do a business trip, and if I do, it may be difficult to actually film this and get it up, um, but hopefully I can. Uh, we'll, we'll see uh, later in next week. So I'll either see you guys next week or the, the week after. But uh, that aside, uh, wherever you guys are, as always, I hope you're keeping safe and keeping sane. I will see you guys next time on China Update. This is the first time a senior leader in the PRC has acknowledged the possibilities of the so-called thucities, 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 thucities. What is wrong with you, Tony? Thucities, thucities.